Hi, this is Seb. This is what we're going to be looking at today. It's a magma pump that you can build in the mid game pretty early and it pumps 10 kilograms per second and it is extremely robust, extremely stable. It will run for a very, very, very long time or maybe forever without uh, ever breaking or um, having any sort of problems. Uh, unless the way, so this is the pipe where the magma is coming out, and here I just dump it back into the, into this this uh, reservoir. Now, if if this pipe backs up, then you can then you can break the pump. But if you keep this moving or or use uh, some sort of a strategy um, uh, to avoid getting a backed up a magma inside here, then this will go on forever and and very very reliably produce 10 kilograms of magma per bead every second and almost never or almost never produce less than 10 kilograms of magma per second. This, uh, this uh, magma pump, this very high uh, heavy duty magma pump uh, consists of essentially two components. So this bit here on the right, I call this the Zarkan magma pump. Uh, it's based on a post on the, on the clay forum by, by Zarkan. I had to modify it because it, uh, 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 Mr. Zark or Mr. Madam, I can't tell. Uh, the user Zarkin said that I warn you that this is a build that has problems, and I know why. Uh, Zarkin's build was uh, probably very short-lived. It would probably uh, break, create steam and break. But this, my version of it, uh, never ever ever has any problems at all. It never creates steam, and it works forever. So that's half of the. Uh, of the ma uh, of the uh, of the magma pump, and the other half is this bit here with the door that you see there, and I call that the uh, the ketchup bottle. So uh, let's try to see how this works. Before we get to to this high heavy duty magma pump, let's look at uh, a simpler design. So and and maybe a little bit of the history of of these magma pumps. So I'm going to start here. Uh, this is. Uh, was contained in a post by uh, Fix Bug Fix Bug in May 2018, and uh, uh, Fix Bug Fix Bug Fix pointed out that you could um, pump magma without destroying your pump. Let's say with a mini liquid pump. So we can see from the from the uh, we can see from the um, f from the user interface. There's a kind of a cross shape on this pump and so this pump can draw uh, in, in this cross shape here so over here and over there in this cross shape that's where this pump can draw liquid and and, and uh, excuse the um, I'm gonna have to do the sandbox here so uh, this pump can can pull liquid from that particular cross shape so if I put it here so uh, the other interesting thing about this is that this pump shape has to be immersed in order to be able to pull liquid. And if there is liquid in any, so you, you see I've used um, drywall here to indicate the region where there has to be liquid in order for the, uh, for the pump to be considered to be immersed. And it's, it's a two by two square. And so if I put the pump, um, where's the mini pump? There it is. If I put the pump here and there is a, uh, there is a, um, water in or, or some liquid here even though the pump doesn't look like it's over here as soon as there's liquid over here the pump is going to be treated as being um, immersed so if I put the mini pump um, like so now we see that this bead of water here convinces this pump here that is immersed but this bead of water is in the upper right corner of the of this little two by two square, and the the pull of this pump is only this cross shape. Let's look at the cross shape again. Where is the? There it is. So you can see the cross, I hope, and it, it cannot pull the bead of water from this sector, so it must therefore only pull from under the pump, and it pulls the magma. Now this being a mini pump, it pulls one kilograms per second of magma we see 1000 grams here there's another mechanic which is going to be very important for magma pumping which is that if you have one kilograms per second or less so a thousand grams per second or less in a pipe 
a fluid, whether it's magma or anything else, that changes, that would change phase. So for example, magma freezes, so right now it's at 1700 degrees, but it freezes at about 14, 1400 degrees, 1409.9 or so, it turns into igneous rock. If you have 10 kilograms per second of magma that drops below 1409.9 degrees in a pipe, it will crack the pipe. I'm sure you've had that very bad experience in your survival games of oxygen not included. But if you have only one kilogram per second, the phase change actually doesn't happen. So it just stays as magma regardless of the temperature. And so, for example, I've turned this off, but you can imagine here that you would have some geothermal power and you would use this magma to make the steam as hot as you want. Here I have some steel radiant liquid pipes to disperse all the heat of the magma into the steam. It's because it's made out of steel, it's not going to melt. You might not have to put it, make it in steel because as soon as the magma enters into the steam room, it's going to lose a lot of heat very, very quickly. So it might not be able to melt pipes anyway. I'm not sure. But you can see that as it comes out of the steam room, the steam is at 117 degrees, or give or take. And so the magma is at 117 degrees and it drops here. And instantly when it comes out, it turns into igneous rock chunks. And you can see here that I have a bunch of igneous rock, uh, 700 kilograms at 125 degrees. And so you can, you can, it, it, it sort of bypasses all of the problems with this magma. If you try to use it for, for, um, for, for geothermal or for the purpose of um, a, a petroleum boiler, the problem is always that at some point the magma will solidify either into these chunks or into solid tiles. And once it solidifies, I mean, this phase change always makes your machines more complicated. So if you can keep the magma in a pipe and do all the work in a pipe, and then finally, once you're finished, you just eject it into chunks, it's, it's, a, it's a, a great convenience. The other thing that you can use this for is you can ship magma a very far distance so that you can maybe perhaps build your petroleum boiler uh, much further away from the volcano. Instead of having to, to build a petroleum boiler exactly next to the volcano, you could ship this off somewhere else. However, this build has a flaw. It's that there's nothing to keep this mini liquid pump cool. And if we look here, it's producing 500 DTUs per second and the temperature is, um, oh, where's the temperature? Here it is, 28.3, 28.4, 28.5. We wait long enough, this plastic liquid pump will reach 150 degrees or, or so, which is the melting point of plastic, and it will melt and drop into the magma, and then, and then it'll be a mess. So this is only useful for a short period of time and you can't even deconstruct the, the liquid pump because as soon as you deconstruct it, some stuff is going to drop into the magna and vaporize. So let me get rid of this now. Now let's look at um, a system that is um, uh, a little bit more uh, robust. Now this system was again proposed by a fix bug, fix bug, fix. So here we use, instead of a mini pump, we use a large pump. But it's exactly the same principle. So this large pump can detect liquid in any of, the, any of the four tiles that it occupies. And if there's liquid in any of these four tiles, the liquid pump counts as being immersed. And, but it also has a cross-shaped region from which it can pull the liquid. So it can pull the magma from here. Now, by the way, everything here is in a vacuum. If there's, if there's any kind of gas here, everything is gonna break because the heat from the magma is going to uh, transfer to the to the atmosphere and then from the atmosphere it will transfer everything and everything will break so it's essential that this be done in a vacuum now I believe that this is by far the simplest way of pumping magna uh, magma uh, for for a for a long period of time or infinite amount of time you could use this for example to uh, to make um, a petroleum boiler or geothermal and it will pump, in, uh, so in here I seem to be pumping, so uh, there's 10 kilograms of magma here, but there's only every other bead or so, so it's, it's maybe 5 kilograms of magma per second, which you might think that's not a lot, but actually even a, a big, uh, normal, uh, so a plain old volcano 
puts out about one kilogram per second. So this would be more than enough for one volcano. You could maybe handle up to five volcanoes with this little device. So let's watch it pump a little bit. Uh, and certainly a mini volcano. And it's plenty of magma uh, for a petroleum boiler or probably uh, a methane or natural gas boiler and many other purposes. But uh, I think today, my, the, the device we're looking at is the goal is trying to get to 10 kilograms per second. Now, this uh, device was in fix bug fix bug fixes uh, post, more or less. And the logic of it is, again, uh, th there has to be some liquid that convinces this liquid pump that it is immersed. In, in this case, it's the NAFTA. I use NAFTA because that's what fix bug fix bug fix used. And it's one kilogram of NAFTA here. Why NAFTA is because... It's very viscous and it won't, at one kilogram, it won't spill to the sides. So we can see that it, it stays there without spilling to the sides. Now, you don't want to have much more than one kilogram here. So this pump has to keep going because if NAFTA were to accumulate here, uh, there'd be trouble. But as a result, it means that what flows out here is going to be a combination of sometimes magma and sometimes NAFTA. So you need some way of sorting the magma goes this way and the magma, go that, the magma goes that way. The most obvious way of sorting it is to use a liquid, what is it called? Liquid filter right here, this thing. So you might want to put that there. And I believe that's what fix, bug, fix, bug, fix used. The problem with a liquid filter is that it, it, it uh, heats up over time. So it, it uses power and it creates heat. The only way to cool it is to either put it in an atmosphere or somehow uh, maybe put a bead of liquid on it. And as soon as you do that, it's going to start interacting with the magma that might be inside and, and possibly overheat. So uh, I prefer to use a, a system that doesn't create any heat, so it can be in a vacuum without being cooled. So uh, there's a number of those uh, sort of uh, energy-less, uh, heat-less filters. Uh, I'm, uh, this is one of them, but there's many of them. Uh, there's a liquid pipe element sensor and a, and a liquid shutoff, and that will allow you to select the NAFTA to go one way and the magma to go the other way. It's an important game mechanic in oxygen not included. The buildings and machines that contain a liquid uh, do not exchange heat with their liquid inside if they're in a vacuum. So this liquid shutoff is at 20 degrees right here. Temperature of the liquid shutoff is at 20 degrees. It will be at 20 degrees forever even though inside is, is magma at, at 1,700 degrees. It will never exchange because it's in a, a vacuum. As soon as you have a little bit of, of, of gas here, for example, if there were a drop of, of water that were to fall into this, or if there was a, just a little bit of gas that were, then uh, the, the, uh, the liquid shutoff would be able to exchange heat with the magma inside, and then everything would break. Because, because of the simplicity of this thing, this is actually an early game build. All you need is the liquid pipe element sensor or some way of filtering uh, the, the separate liquids, the NAFTA from the, um, from the, from the magma, and then you keep it going in a, in a cycle. Now, the only thing that makes this not quite uh, infinite is that this pump is going to heat up over time. Now it's being cooled by the magma, that, the, sorry, the naphtha that goes round and round. Because when there's a little bit of naphtha here, just a little bead, it absorbs the heat uh, of this of this pump, and then and then it, it gets it goes around. So if you really want this to go on forever, you would perhaps run this pipe through some sort of cooling system to keep it uh, always the same temperature, and then and then you would have a, a system that might run forever. The other thing that can happen is that the 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 game sometimes deletes liquids in certain situations. I think one kilogram of naphtha, it might never delete, but in some of my tests, I felt like it was still deleting a little bit of naphtha over time. I'm not entirely sure though. So if it deletes naphtha, you're gonna have to have some sort of way of replenishing the naphtha, which suggests that you would need to be able to generate naphtha. And naphtha is not so easy to make because you need plastic. Uh, but in any case, this is probably the simplest, apart from the naphtha, the simplest, earliest game build that you can make. And it can obviously, so pump them, here I'm going in a circle, but, um, so, now here is, uh, if you want, so this is the same system, 
but uh, with some some improvement. So here, one of the problems is that you never want to stop this pump because the naphtha comes out. If it accumulates here, it'll spill in the magma. So this has to keep going on forever. But what if you want to be able to throttle this to slow it down? Um, so so here's the the exact same a mechanism, but with a few tweaks. So first of all, instead of using naphtha, I'm using water just to show that it's possible. Uh, the only difference is that, uh, uh, so you have to make sure that you don't spill too much water here. So this is what the liquid valve is for. Up here we had um, one kilogram per second, but here we have 10 grams per second. Now, even though it's a very small amount, this 10 grams of water is in fact able to keep this uh, liquid pump cool uh, at around 75 degrees. So I've made it out of gold amalgam just to be sure. Uh, and and so it, it's right here. Now, uh, you can use this, so let, uh, hold on a second. Let's get some more, um, let's get some more iron here. So this is a, a, a I've, I've, I've got a fake iron volcano. And if you want to tame an iron volcano, now iron volcanoes put out, I don't know, a few hundred grams of iron per second. So, uh, here I grab the 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 molten vol the molten um, uh, iron with this pump, and and I send the molten iron this way, and of course I send the water up here. Here I have a a I'm going to suppose that this is an infinite supply of water, so that so that means that for example you would have some water that come that's coming from whatever your base, and it's going to be nice and and nice temperature so that you can s cycle the, the the little bead of water here right through this environment. To keep it nice and cool, and if the the beads of water sometimes get sometimes get deleted, we're gonna replenish the loop. There's a little pump here, liquid pump, and we're gonna replenish the the, the cooling loop. Now you'll notice that it ha has stopped. So the, the fe one of the features of the system is that you can you can throttle it, you can s slow it down, you can do anything you like, and uh, here I have a switch if I want to force it on. So now it's gonna be on. So you see. Now the way that you turn it on and off is that you just close this liquid vent. But you have to be careful because if you just close the liquid vent, even though this is t says 10 grams per second, these grams per second are, are going to accumulate behind the vent. So you have to have a pass through. So here the water passes through and rejoins the loop. So that you'll only ever have 10 grams behind the vent waiting for when the vent opens. And I've used a little bit of automation here with a, with a uh, liquid reservoir so as to avoid having pipes full of, of, of liquid iron because if the liquid iron sits in a pipe for a long period of time it could conceivably cool enough as to crack the pipe but instead I'm storing it in a liquid reservoir and the nice thing about a liquid reservoir is that the anything you have in there does not exchange temperature with the liquid reservoir so this liquid reservoir is at 20 degrees Celsius and will forever be at 20 degrees Celsius even though its contents is uh, is uh, iron at 2200 and 21 degrees Celsius. So because it's in a vacuum, if, it, if there's any atmosphere here, then it will exchange, the, the reservoir will exchange uh, heat with, with the iron that's inside. But provided that you keep the whole thing in a vacuum, you can store a little bit. Now I've set my parameters here to 7% to 10%. So it's a very small amount of molten iron that I've got in here. And then when it, once there's 10% uh, full, it signals to, to, the, uh, to the liquid vent to close. So, so here I can accumulate a little bit of molten iron, which, which keeps all these pipes here nice and empty. Okay, so you, they won't crack. Here I have a, uh, a flow control uh, liquid valve that limited to one kilogram per second so that I can do the trick again where I cool all this iron in, in a steam room, perhaps with some steam turbines. And then we bring this all the way. Oh, it formed a, it formed a, hold on a second. Then we bring this all the way back to our base, and so this way, this is a this would be like a, a, an iron volcano tamer that brings all of the material. You see, at this point here, I you don't need it ceramic pipes because the the iron inside is 150 degrees, so you can use very cheap pipes and bring this all the way home. You can also cool the the iron as much as you like inside the pipes. It's a lot easier to cool iron when it's in this, inside of a pipe in liquid form, so you can cool this as much as you like, and that would make for a, for a, a volcano tamer. And it's all based off of this uh, fix, bug, fix, bug, fix uh, 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 internet user, uh, his idea or her idea for a liquid pump here. And again, the way that it works is as long as you have a bead of water or any liquid here, it turns on and then it starts uh, pumping the iron. 
But all of these pumps cannot do, so you can see it here, it can only do, um, a, a, you know, half a kilogram, for example, per second. And what we want to do is the full over here. This is, this is the full uh, 10 kilograms. So 10 kilograms here, and this is maybe 5 kilograms. So, so this is the system that does 10 kilograms. And so in order to understand how this works, I mean, obviously, it's the same as the idea as the fixed bug, fixed bugs, fix a person who invented the, uh, the this kind of pumping but there's something different about it so in order to understand we have to speak a little bit about waterfalls so um, starting from the left now this, these are called beads so I'm gonna pause the game so we can see that there's a vent here and out of the vent there come these beads and and this is a view of all the materials that are present in the map so this is a water tile. It contains 10 kilograms of water, and, and there's another one up there. So these are real physical water tiles with real physical waters that behaves exactly like, like real physical water. And we can see a waterfall here, and all of these tiles are real physical waters. That, so you can interact with them, and they're really present. So you can use this, for example, you can use a waterfall to make an airlock. Now over here we have another waterfall, but it's interrupted. And when it in, when it's interrupted, you can see the there's a bit of rain here. It's interrupted because there's a block here. So it turns out when there's a waterfall that's falling, and then suddenly there's a block immediately to the right, it turns into rain. And when we look at the material screen, it really does the the, the tiles stop here, and the rain is actually somehow just a visual effect. There's no water that's present there as far as the engine is concerned. And so if you look at this pump here, there's two really fantastic things. Maybe let's look at this one first. So of course, this pump can draw from the five usual locations which are in cross shape here. But in order for it to be considered to be immersed, any one of these four tiles is to contain water. And you can see th here that there's a levitating water bead right there. Now if this water be bead were to fall into this tile, it would get absorbed by the liquid pump and pumped out. But as long as it stays up there, and lo as long as it levitates and doesn't fall here, this pump cannot suck this water bead inside. And you can see the pipe that's coming out of the, of the pump, as even though the pump looks like it's pumping a tremendous amount, absolutely nothing is coming out. This bead is gonna stay there forever. This is a, this is a waterfall, a very short one, two tile waterfall, which is stopped by this block here. And so therefore, this pump never gets the chance to grab this bead. Now you can see the, the water drops. So once the waterfall is, is stopped, it rains and ends up down here. So we can use this bead to fool the pump into pumping anything, and it will never grab this bead. So we don't have the problem that we would have over here, where sometimes we grab the bead of water. Let's get it to pump a little bit. So sometimes we grab the bead of water and we have to filter out the water and then filter out the magma or the, the molten iron the, in a different way. In this case, we never have to filter out the water because it can never enter the pump. So here's an example of what w one might attempt is to have, so I've used petroleum here, but this is, a, this is kind of in my, in my imagination, this petroleum is supposed to be magma. So if you could have a magma waterfall so this bead of water up here would, would sort of uh, convince this water pump to, to, to suck on whatever liquid is around it. And this petroleum that represents magma, once, once the magma waterfall reaches this tile, it would get sucked into the water pump. And it really does work. It really does work. We're sucking here. You see this is the, the flow coming out of this vent here. It's from that pump. We're sucking in about 5.5 kilograms of petroleum per second. Um, and, and no water at all. So it really does work, but 5.5 kilograms per second is only half of this waterfall. So we're, we're only grabbing about half of the petroleum that's falling. We can see drip drops down here of petroleum, so that the rest of it, about 4.5 kilograms per second, is falling down here of the petroleum. So if this were a magma fall, uh, you would grab a bit more than half of the magma this way with this pump here. But the, the other half of the magma would, would fall to the bottom of the map, and we wouldn't be able to, to pick it up anymore. I mean, unless we do something very complicated with, mag with uh, door pumps. But, but if it's going to be a simple machine, this is not going to work. Incidentally, just to, to emphasize, none of these pumps are exchanging heat with, with uh, the magma. So, for example, this petroleum is 170 degrees, but this 
pump here is at 35 degrees, which is the same as that of the water, because the magma you see, or the petroleum, doesn't touch, touch the pump. It flows next to the pump, and this pump is surrounded by a vacuum, so it never exchanges heat with this liquid. It does exchange heat with the water bead here, so this water bead provides cooling for this pump, even though it never gets sucked in. So uh, this a particular arrangement is due to uh, Zarkan in September of 2019. And, and he tried uh, a couple of, uh, at least a couple, I think, of different configurations, but he, he wrote, I warn you that this uh, build has problems. Uh, so I want to show you what the problems are with this build. So the Zarkan pump, so here is uh, maybe a, a version of the Zarkan pump that's a little bit closer to what Zarkan posted. So here you have your magma, and here you have your pump. Now right now it should be off. Yes, it's off. So uh, Zarkan didn't have, so, so here I'm going to show you what, what I call a spillway perhaps. Uh, Zarkan didn't have a spillway, but, but, but in that comment thread there were spillways. So let, let's look at the spillway. So if I open this hole here, now it's a very well known fact that magma is, so magma is very, very viscous. So it spreads very slowly. And if you wait, it'll, it'll spread exactly 11 tiles, depending on how you count, 11 or 10 tiles, depending on how you count. So let's see, cancel. So, okay, so let's go like this. So this is 10 tiles, or if you want to count from here, this is 11 tiles. So there's like what I call a finger of magma here, 59.9 kilograms. And now it will stay forever like this. This magma will never keep going. That's it, it's, it's stopped now. And this is the perfect square because this pump, you see, can grab this magma. Now, another thing that you could do is to destroy this tile. And now it's even better because now you have two tiles where the magma could be. So maybe the, if the magma were to spill over here, then it could grab the magma from here. So this is, this, is, uh, this is Zarkan's pump, and I can turn it on, and it really does work. And this pump here is at uh, right now at uh, 28 degrees, which should be exactly the same temperature as the water. Yes, exactly the same temperature of the water. And we can see that it totally is pumping 10 kilograms per second of magma. So it's perfect. So it would seem that this solves the problem, and this is very simple. But as Zarkin said, uh, this build has problems. So this finger here was 59.9 kilograms when we started. Let me stop this. Now it has 119 kilograms. I don't know what this had, but the problem is that in order to replenish the finger here, all of this magma has to move a little bit, and when it does that, uh, all the all the um, quantities of magma that you see here sort of randomly change around. And by and by, this is not going to be 59.9 kilograms, but it's going to be more and more magma that's going to be in this finger. And after, I don't know how long, maybe a couple of cycles, suddenly it's going to spill over. Now, if you have a gap like I do here, uh, I, I don't know if it immediately causes a problem, but very quickly it's going to spill either into the water and create steam and then destroy everything or it's going to somehow splash on this on this pump and either way as soon as it happens so maybe a couple of cycles maximum this whole thing breaks so you can't really use a Zarkin pump this way um, to pump 10 kilograms per second of magma at least not for not for an infinite amount of time so um, the thing that will make the Zarkin pump work is what I call the, uh, the ketchup bottle. This is the ketchup bottle. So um, you've got a bunch of magma here. I have a little spillway. So the, the reason for the spillway, so here you see the magma is 1.8 ton per tile, just about. But after, when it goes through this thing, it, the, 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 um, the weight of it diminishes. So that over here it's 774 kilograms of magma. And I, I find that this is, this, is, this is easier to work with than the full 1.8 ton. And then you have a, mechanic, a mecha mechanized airlock, which is made out of steel. And this is, everybody knows, I think, that you can use mechanized airlocks to make mechanical pumps, even for magma. You could pump magma all the way up. I only, but this normally you need an enormous number of mechanical airlocks. I have only one, and this is all I'm going to need. I also have a button here, and the, the automation is connected to the airlock. When I close the airlock, so this is the ketchup bottle, when I close the airlock, I call that a squeeze. So let's see what happened when I squeeze. So here we go, squeeze. So a little bit of the magma gets pushed up, and there was no magma on this tile previously, but now there is. Now, just like a ketchup bottle, you have to release because the ketchup didn't come out. You shake, you release and shake a little bit, so you release. Now there's still magma here, so if I squeeze again, 
it spills up to here. Now, I want it to spill two tiles. We'll see why. And I'll release it. And I squeeze again. And now I have two tiles of it. And so this is the ketchup bottle. And each time that I push this button, I call it a squeeze. So if we go back to... Um, if we go back to the um, the heavy duty 10 kilogram per second magma pump, of course, uh, on the on the right you have the Zarkin pump, so it's almost exactly the same as what Zarkin proposed. Uh, the difference is that I'm using the, both of the tiles, not just uh, the tile next to it. Uh, Zarkin just wanted to use the tile under the pump, but I'm using both the tile to the left and the tile below the magma pump. And I have a bead of, of water. You don't have to use water. You could use petroleum, any, any liquid that you want uh, up here to, to fool the pump into uh, thinking that it's immersed. And then I have the magma that's here. And so all of this stuff here is just the Zarkin magma pump. The stuff on this side is the, uh, is the, is the ketchup bottle. Now, this, I have to explain in a little bit this little automation here but uh, it's actually not necessary to have it for it to run so if I just cut this here it'll just keep going you see um, it doesn't need it well it does but but I'll, I'll explain why so uh, how does the ketchup bottle work so I've already shown you've got the magma here you push the magma out it gets into the door periodically you push magma up and you get a little bit of magma over the over the lip here and it goes two tiles, and I still have this step. And it's the whole thing is uh, is tuned so that there's almost never any magma on this step. It's really a safety step, but it still sometimes happens. Maybe once every two cycle, you get a tiny little bit of magma here. But this has been running for 287 cycles, and it's been running. There's many uh, uh, copies of this on this map, so there's like five copies, uh, and it ha none of the magma has ever flown into this. And, and broken anything. So you can break this only if you mess around with the outflow of the magma, but if you don't, uh, this will work forever. Now, how do, how do you activate, how do you squeeze the bottle? We have two hydro sensors, and because you have to be very careful not to squeeze too much ketchup, too much magma, I have two hydro sensors and they both have to request a squeeze. Now they request a squeeze by sending the signal red. So let's look at the uh, automation overlay. So again, don't never mind the wire going up. If either one of these is green, then there is enough magma. But if they're if they're both red, then we need a squeeze, and we squeeze by closing the door. And it's very important to note the uh, the numbers here. So set green signal if above 250 and set, send green signal if above 75. Uh, and with those settings, this is how you get the 10 kilograms per second forever, no accidents of any kind. And um, so what does this do? So it's easier to show you if I, if I, if I restart this thing. So let, let me, um, right. So, so now, now it's completely empty. And so like this, now, you see that the door is closed because both of these are saying, no, 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 there's not enough magma. We need to squeeze, close the door. But actually, there's no magma here. And now they're kind of stuck. This is, this is you uh, having squeezed the ketchup bottle. You still see that there's ketchup inside of the bottle. You need to release the bottle a little bit, let the air back inside the bottle, and squeeze again. But, but this is not clever enough. So this is what... This is, this is going to help... Uh, repeating the squeeze so um, it's shockingly simple I you would think that there would be like a wire coming up and a wire coming back down but it's just one wire and then it's a not gate a, a buffer gate and a filter gate in a circle with default settings five seconds each and if you connect this it will detect that there's a squeeze going on and when there's a squeeze going on it will only allow the door to be closed for up to five seconds and they will open it for five seconds and then close it again and do the squeeze. It will keep on squeezing until these guys start putting out green to say, okay, now we have enough magma and then it's gonna stop. So let me close the connection here like this. So it's gonna open, squeeze, open, squeeze, open, squeeze, 
open. There we go. So now, now this is not needed really anymore. All of this is being done now by these, uh, by these hydro sensors. This is no longer doing anything. Um, although you could start the whole thing manually, when you have this is what I call the high throughput mode, where you're putting out 10 kilograms per second constantly all the time. If you do this, the magma is leaving these tiles pretty quickly, and I think over a couple of hundred cycles, it happened one time that this this magma here would have needed two squeezes from the door to replenish itself. So without the automation, it squeezes once, and then unfortunately, it stays stuck in the squeeze position because this is what you need to, to squeeze repeatedly. Um, so you mainly do need this to start the pump, but you very, very rarely need it uh, to restart it if it accidentally it takes up all, all of the magma, which happens like once every 200 cycles. You can also automate this. So here I have a switch where I can turn it off. So now it's off and then you see the magma is not coming out anymore. Now this cycle is going to keep going, but uh, there's no magma coming out and everything is stable. Nothing is broken. I can turn it back on again. Now, if you're going to toggle it from time to time and turn it on and off again, this setting here of 75, um, I, I don't know. I don't know if it will ever break, but I prefer to bring this down because this will work. If you put 10 here, uh, if you put 10, it will still work. It's just that you might occasionally get a bead here that's less than 10 kilograms. And certainly, if you have less magma here, it feels safer to me. I, I don't know if, if it could ever happen in, in millions of cycles. Uh, that 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 uh, this would break, but I, I think that when the pump is constantly pumping at 75, so if, if you leave this on all the time and you put it at 75, this will never ever break. But if you sometimes turn it off, like this, I don't know. I pr I would just put this at 10 or maybe 30, just to just to have less magma. But that being said, in in 288 cycles, I have several of these pumps on in this map. Um, I've never seen it break, except, well, I've seen it break, except when I backed up uh, this magma. So, so let's look at some of the things that I built with this. So here is, uh, is one where I quantify um, how, how, how good, how well, this, um, how well this pump works. So this is the exact same pump I just showed you, but up here I'm counting uh, how many, how many, how many of these, so in the, in the pipes you have um, beads of magma or bubbles of magma, which are 10 kilograms each. So throughout, uh, I don't, I didn't, uh, these counters are not 289 cycles old. I've reset them at some point, but there had, there have been 43,000 beads of 10 kilogram magma. So 430 tons of magma uh, that have been, has been pumped through this. And of those 43,000 beads, 14 of them were less than 10 kilograms. So this is an automated system to count that. So, so when I say that every single bead is 10 kilograms, it happened 14 times over this 43, uh, 40, 40, 430 tons of magma. It happened 14 times. So it does happen, I guess, that you get slightly less than 10 kilograms of magma. So it, it might happen very rarely. Um, and down here, I'm counting something else. So here I have a little alarm system, which you don't need to put in your own system to warn me when magma stops, when it falls on this step, because I'm a little bit, I was a little bit scared when I was designing this, that the magma would fall into this water tank. So I've put a little hydro sensor here that's connected to an alarm system, and also to a counter. Now, he, this is the number of cycles that I've been running this little counter for. So it's been running for 54 cycles. And in those 54 cycles, the number of, so each time that it squeezes, it might, there might be some magma that lands here, right? So it happened 28 times in 54 cycles. So roughly every two cycle or so, this arrangement squeezes a tiny little bit of magma here, but never into the water. That never happens. Now, one of the questions that you might have is, how does this thing cool itself? Well, I didn't, I didn't really put the cooling. Um, so you would have to do that yourself if you, if you look here. So here there's um, just about almost two tons of water in this little cavity here. And right now it's at 39.6 degrees. I don't know how long it was in there, 50 cycles maybe. You can, 
if you're going to run this for less than, than 100 cycles, you can probably get away with not cooling it at all. Because this water here goes up here and then cools this liquid pump. The only thing you have to keep kind of like cool is those two liquid pumps and they're both being cooled by the water. Now if you plan to run this for a longer period of time, you would either, um, so, so, so one way would be to, let's say, put, uh, put a, a metal tile here. And then, you know, whatever environment is here is going to provide, if, hopefully, if you have, a, if you have a, a temperate environment, like a 20 degree environment, then, you know, uh, you're going to bleed a little bit of heat into the environment and that'll be good enough for thousands of, thousands of, uh, of cycles. But if you insist, you can actively cool it. You can just run a pipe right through this, like a run a pipe of, of whatever, like whatever, if you have 20 degrees water, for example, from your, that you're going to be using uh, for your base. Just run run a pipe of water right through this, just to cool just to cool this, and it requires a very very small amount of small amount of cooling. It's 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 extremely small amount of cooling. You don't have to worry about the magma here. And if you want to access this, um, you with your dupes to fix something later, uh, you can delete this and walk inside. So walk and then walk. If you don't want to walk into the magma here, you can also delete this and uh, walk on this on this side. Of course, you want to make sure that uh, everything is in a vacuum. So you might want to put in some uh, some some uh, water lock, or you know, some, some. You want to make sure that everything is, stays in a vacuum. Uh, so how can how can this pump fail by itself? It, it cannot. I don't. I don't think. I don't think it can fail. Um, I, I don't think this can fail by itself. But but uh, when you connect it to other stuff, then then bad things can happen. So this is. What everybody's thinking of, they're thinking of, um, oh, hold on a second, uh, of uh, thermal, um, geothermal power. So here we've got, uh, let's say your volcano, and I'm pumping it here. Now, this is a case where I'm only using um, two kilograms per second of magma. So when I first designed this thing, I didn't have this uh, liquid reservoir here. So I just had the magma connected straight to these liquid valves which allowed one kilogram of magma per second into the um, into into the steam room and uh, I also you can see that I didn't cool my uh, my steam turbines with in, in a real uh, 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 survival map you need to cool these these things but because I was working in, in this uh, sort of debug sandbox sort of prototype and, and I'm not trying to develop a, a steam box I'm working on this uh, on this magma pump, right? So I just I just dumped a bunch of uh, very cold hydrogen in the background, and I forgot about it. And then over a hundred cycles, I guess I didn't have that much hydrogen. Uh, these steam turbines uh, overheated and stopped stopped cooling the steam. And then what was happening is that the magma kept flowing, and the steam got hotter and hotter, until the pipes here at the end, which are made of sandstone, uh, melted. Once the two pipes on each side melted, this system stop running and then uh, because I didn't have any automation or anything uh, this pump was still trying to pump and it got stuck so th these pipes here uh, got stuck with a bunch of magma in them now these are insulated pipes so the magma inside uh, doesn't doesn't uh, lose a lot of its heat because it because it's insulated pipe now if you if you can make the pipes out of insulation I guess they could stay in there forever I guess but mine are made out of ceramic because I was pretending to be kind of a mid-game build. And ceramic is not a perfect insulator. So, so the magma that's inside of the pipes, for example, here, uh, is losing a bit of heat to the pipe. However, the magma that's inside of the pipe that's behind the liquid bead here, right here, so I've clicked it here, this liquid pipe is behind a liquid bead. And if there's a magma bead inside of this pipe, it will lose heat not just to the pipe but also to the bead of water that's right here. Which means that this bead of magma cools slightly faster, very slowly, but slightly faster than, than these other beads of magma. And so what happened is I wasn't watching for hundreds of cycles. And, and this pipe here, uh, the magma reached 1409.9 degrees, which is the, the temperature at which it freezes and turns into igneous rock. And because it wasn't one kilogram of, of magma, it was 10 kilograms of magma, it froze in the pipe and cracked the pipe. And then it dropped a, a chunk of, of, of 1400 degree magma into this water tank down there, 
Now, I don't know which vaporized first, either this bead there or the, or the water that's down there, but in any case, this filled with, with, uh, with steam and then broke everything. So if this ever fills with steam, um, it will break. So the, the, in order to avoid that, you want to make sure that either the magma is constantly flowing, never stopping, because you don't want it to, to cool and cool and cool until it breaks in this particular segment, or what I did here is I put a little bit of automation. So on, on this liquid reservoir, I said I want between 7 and 10% full, and I've connected the, the automation wire to the pump. And this way the pump will stop when the reservoir is full. And there's gonna, never going to be any backed up magma in here. If there's any backed up magma, it'll be out here. It might crack these pipes, but these pipes aren't going to cause any problems for my magma pump. So it's a very uh, le much less of a serious problem if, if these pipes crack. It's a much more serious problem if, if the pump breaks. And uh, again, because this building is in, is in vacuum, so it does not exchange heat with the magma that's inside. The magma that's inside is at 1,725 degrees Celsius, but the, uh, the liquid reservoir itself is at 20 degrees Celsius. Let's see. Uh, 20 degrees, right here. 20 degrees Celsius. And it will it'll always stay at 20 degrees Celsius, provided that it's in a vacuum. And it's the same thing with these, these liquid valves. So I've made them out of steel because I was making everything out of steel, but it don't need to be out of steel because they're never going to exchange... See, they're at 20 degrees, both of them. So they're never going to exchange any heat with the magma. So you can make stuff... This one is made out of copper ore. The only thing that needs to be made out of steel is obviously the stuff that's immersed in magma. So this, uh, this mechanized airlocks and, and the hydro sensor is here, the automation, the, the wire that connects to the, to the airlock, that stuff needs to be made out of steel, but um, everything else you can make out of uh, cheaper material, easier to get in the mid-game. Let me just briefly talk about how people use um, magma, like traditional ways. So the simplest way is something like this. So, so imagine you have here, uh, I've disabled it for now, but you have some sort of a geothermal, geothermal power. You have your steam room, which is 150 degrees, and you know the door closes to transfer the heat. And this would be like your your volcano or your your bottom of the map magma. Now, what happens when you do it this way is that the magma that's closest to what you know the, you're using the the heat here. So this magma here is is colder. It's uh, 1378 degrees Celsius, and and as you as you get further away, uh, it's 1400 degrees Celsius here. And as you get further away, it'll be hotter. But it, it's going to solidify into tiles like this. And if you're using this for steam, at some point, if this is less than, I don't know, a couple hundred degrees Celsius, you can't really warm your steam with this anymore. And you're going to have to send your dupes over here to sort of dig this out so that you, so that you can bring in some fresh cold magma. And, of course, the idea is to automate this. So here's an example um, of what's called a, a dropper that you would use, for example, with a, a petroleum boiler. For a petroleum boiler... You need your source of heat to be, I don't know, 600 degrees Celsius. So here's an example of igneous rock here, which is way too cold, 189 degrees Celsius. Um, so it, it was originally magma, but it dropped here. And we can see that I've got some uh, some chunk. So this is a tile. This is a chunk of igneous rock at 190 degrees Celsius. And here, this is more igneous rock at 194 degrees Celsius. Now, the thing that's important to know is that it's really, really hard to get the heat out of chunks. Now, these chunks are pretty cold. That's because they were sitting there for hundreds of cycles. Um, it, but normally, with a, with a chunk like this, it's extremely hard to get the heat out of them. But it's a lot he easier to get the heat out of, out of a tile. So, so you normally want to have tiles of magma. However, when it's too cold, you have to get rid of them. So one of the ways is to have a, a RoboMiner nearby that can dig it out. So let's, let's turn this on now. So let's dig out. There we go. Now, when it, once it's dug out, you need to get rid of it because if you drop magma here, it's going to interact with this, this sort of uh, cold igneous rock and it's going to immediately cool the magma and you don't want to do that. So let's get rid of this cold magma. There we go. And then you would drop uh, a, a little bit of magma. But you have to be careful. You don't want to get chunks because it's very hard to get the heat out of them. What you want is to get big tiles. So here we go. There we go. So hopefully now we have nice big tiles of magma. So we, if we wait a little bit, uh, they're going to uh, turn into um, tiles. Oh, so you see, I got unlucky. This made 
uh, chunks of magma. So that's that's really bad. Uh, and now you can see that they're not dropping in temperature. 1407.8. It's going to take, I don't know, 100 cycles for this to cool. So it's not providing any heat to my system. So then I would have to try again. So it's very hard to do it this way. And also, um, typically, if you have a petroleum boiler, you need this stuff to be at 600 degrees. And so the, 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 the garbage chunks of magma that, that you're going to, or igneous rock that you're going to dispose of are going to be 600 degrees, which means that there's still a little bit of energy that you could have used from the magma. So I think that overall, this is, this is kind of complicated, and it's easier to have the magma in pipes uh, you know, at one kilogram per second, because then you, you don't have to worry about anything freezing and the, the various, you don't need a robo miner or anything like this. And also you can, of course, move the magma around um, so that you don't have to have your, your petroleum boiler or whatever you want, whatever, whatever you're using the magma for, methane boiler or, sorry, natural gas, or if you're trying to melt your, uh, um, the, the frozen core of your asteroid, for example, you know, you're going to need to, to, to move the, the magma around, or at least the heat. Um, it's a lot easier to move the heat around if you just put the magma into pipes. This is another system. Uh, I think this is... I forget who, who this was. Is it... Is it um, I don't remember who... Uh, one of the YouTubers. I don't remember. I'm sorry. Uh, this is called a spillway. What happens is that uh, if you put some magma here... Let's get some magma. Um... So the magma can flow behind these uh, these mesh tiles, but once it solidifies into it, into um, into chunks, uh, solid chunks are not allowed to be behind uh, uh, behind the um, the uh, uh, behind this. So so they teleport across diagonally into the steam room. So let's let's see what it looks like. So you see, these chunks are teleporting diagonally into the steam room, and this is going to heat up the steam room. But uh, again. Uh, it's hard to get this heat far away from this system, and the other thing is uh, these these pieces of igneous rock. This 700 degrees. There's quite a bit of heat that's stuck in the 700 degree igneous rock that you're not ever going to be able to extract that energy um, unless you have very space age technology and you can grab these these pieces of igneous rock and sort of ferry them out. Uh, but but uh, I'm talking about mid game. Um, so and and again, of course, you would have to be pretty close. There's also, I don't know if it affects this build, but when chunks, uh, when small chunks of, of igneous rock fall on, to, on top of a massive chunk of igneous rock, there used to be a, a, some sort of bug in the video game where, where a lot of heat would get deleted. So I don't know if this system is vulnerable to it. I'm not sure. But um, so, so anyway, this is another possible choice. So... Um, with this system, so here's a, an example of a petroleum boiler. Again, this petroleum boiler uses... I apologize. Last five... Two, two, so 2%. Two so this petroleum boiler uses approximately 200 grams per second of magma. So you wouldn't need this fancy thing. You could use one of the simpler um, uh, pumps. I don't know which one. Like this one, for example, or, or even this one. Um, you could use one of the simpler methods uh, to, to pump it. But I, anyway, so I used, I used my approach. So the, the, uh, the, the Zarquan pump over here with the ketchup bottle squeezer. So this, this, could, this is maybe useful when you start the system because you can pump a lot of magma um, very quickly. Now the way that so I, I don't know if you know how uh, petroleum boiler works. So if I put a bit of crude oil here, um, and and then I flick the switch. Now the crude oil is currently at uh, 140 something degrees. If it reaches 400 and just about 400 degrees, it will uh, it will it will turn into petroleum. So let's watch as it, so it's quickly heating up. It will soon turn into petroleum. So there's some petroleum already. The rest of it is going to turn into petroleum soon. There we go. So this is this is uh, this is how you make petroleum with a petroleum boiler. You just cook the oil until 403 degrees or so, which you can then use to make um, petroleum generators. So so let's look at um, this kind of petroleum boiler. So uh, this is a very standard. I think this is John Francis's build. Um, 
the way that it works is you get your crude oil in a pipe from, from, the, from the oil biome coming up. Mine is coming at 77 degrees. Now, never mind the zigzag for now, but it's, so it zigzags up like this. And when it gets to the top, magically, it's at 400 degrees. I'll explain why in a second. And, and so 399.3, and this is, uh, you know, one or two more degrees and it turns into petroleum. So then we spill it out here, and these tiles you can see are at 402 degrees, 409 degrees, 410 degrees. The reason why they're at this nice temperature is because of the magma. So I'm basically flowing magma into this to keep this hot. And this is enough to turn the, the crude oil that you see blinking in and out here. It turns it into petroleum. So this is all 400 degree petroleum, this big bucket. And it spills over at 400 degrees, and then it starts flowing down this way. But as it flows down, it passes the crude oil, which is cold. So this 400 degree crude oil, uh, sorry, petroleum is what's heating up the crude oil that flows in the opposite direction, all the way up to 400 degrees, and it flows down. But it, uh, the petroleum is heating up the crude oil, but to do so, it must expand its own uh, temperature, its own heat, so that by the time that it comes out here, the petroleum is at nine, uh, 97 degrees. Now, in addition to, um, to this counterflow, the other thing that provides heat to the, the, to the crude oil is I'm counterflowing, you can see it here, this is magma. So there's one kilogram per second of magma flowing into this system here, and this is just the bucket here that you need to, uh, to heat up the, the, the crude oil to 403 degrees or so. But by the time that the, you see that the magma in this segment of pipe is at 409 degrees. So it, it starts out at 1,707 degrees magma, but then it heats up this stuff, and by the time that it's here, it's at 409 degrees 0.4, which is just enough to turn the crude oil uh, into petroleum. But it still has quite a bit of temperature left to it, so we counterflow it down. So when it's, for example, here, there's a, there's a diamond window tile here, and, and so the magma that's inside of this bead at 401.9 degree is trying to heat up the diamond window type, tile, which is currently at 337.4 degrees. And that means that it exchanges heat with uh, the petroleum and also the crude oil that's in this little bit of pipe. And so we keep the, uh, the magma flowing down here, and it exchanges, in each one of these three, four window tiles, it exchanges temperature with the crude oil and the petroleum, so that by the time that it gets to the bottom, the magma is now at 175 degrees. Now, 175 degrees is still quite hot, so you could actually keep this counterflow going and heat up the crude oil a little bit more, gain a little bit more efficiency. I stopped here because my, my crude oil is already at 399.3 degrees when it gets to the top. If it gets too, any hotter, there's a real risk that I'm going to crap my pipes here. I don't want that to happen. So I thought this was good enough. Um, so, and as a bonus, you get this this nice and cool um, magma igneous rock that you can use. You don't have to attach the volcano like immediately here. So you can put this wherever you want. You just have to pipe the magma into this liquid reservoir here. And it's a it's a pretty small. Uh, I mean, I know it looks pretty big, but it's a by you know com by comparison, this is a pretty small p a petroleum boiler. This is my uh, magma pump, my 10 kilograms per second magma pump, based on, uh, on uh, Zarquan's uh, 2019 uh, waterfall pump, which is over here. I, you know, I should also mention that uh, Mathematician is the one who elucidated how these waterfalls work in the first place. And, uh, all, and all of this is, of course, based on uh, Fix Bug, Fix Bug, Fix, uh, who figured out how we could pump magma um, using some of these contraptions, either this one or, or this one. These are all like fix bug, fix bug, fix uh, inventions that we're seeing here.